Logan, you as you've been a teammate of Tom's before. Um, you know, just, just talk about the opportunity to come here and, and uh, you know. what what obviously attracted you to this situation at this point in your career. Yeah, the number one thing about coming here was winning a championship, and that's what I'm here to do and help with. And um, being a teammate of Tom, that's what he's about. Playing football at the highest level, practicing football at the highest level, and obviously the expectation and standard is championship um, each and every year and each and every day. So I was excited to have that opportunity, and uh, that's what I'm playing for at this point in my career. And it makes a lot of sense. It's a great organization otherwise, but I think the championship, the uh, opportunity to go compete for that and have a talented roster around me. Um, allow just come in, be a great teammate, do great things in the community, and, and win a championship. The Bucks tried to get you two years ago. How much a part of that recruiting process was Tom, and did he give you grief for not coming then? <laughs> he was he was part of it, and uh, it, it was pretty mutual a couple years ago, um, and it, it didn't work out at the time, just money, but um, it worked out this time. And it didn't take much of a recruiting pitch for him this time because I knew how much uh, the organization had valued me a couple years ago. So uh, better late than never. And, and when did you find out that he was making that comeback? Did you think it was going to happen? Were you, were you shocked when you heard that he was retiring or did you kind of figure maybe it was coming? I had no idea, honestly. I, I put out a nice, thoughtful tweet about his retirement. I put time into that tweet. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I went back to the first time I met him and practices and I reminisced and uh, I was in the kitchen making something for my kids, maybe a hot pocket or something like that. And uh, and my wife told me so I, I was late. I was late to the party later than everyone else here. Um, did you see what's going on? Tom's back. I'm like, what? So, yeah, I, I had no idea. Well, did you, uh, do you remind him that his last pass as a Patriot was to you and you ended up in the end zone? Taking it the other way. Uh, no, he he know, he's got a good memory, um, so I'm sure he remembers. I don't I don't I don't remind him. Uh, we move on, but I'm you know I know he remembers that play. I think he does. Hey Logan, in regards to your versatility, playing safety corner, in your talks with the Bucks, what did they communicate as their their vision for you with the with the team? Uh, come in, be a great player. Period. Um, they know I'm a great teammate. And um, bring experience, uh, have some experience um, to the secondary. And it's a great young group, but I, I just have a little experience to me. And just be a great communicator, um, help shore up the communication. Um, some disguise is, is what I do well. So, so some of my strong suits are just a natural fit of what they needed. But uh, versatility is my calling card in this league. It got me 10 years here. So whatever position that may be, that's up to the Todd Bowles. Um, to play me wherever he wants to play me. I just got to be able to learn it all. But um, it's a really talented group. And I, I knew there was a, an opening there when the young, talented safety went to the Jets. And I knew there was an opportunity there for myself and uh, play with, you know, uh, Mike Edwards and, and Winfield and Carlton Davis and Murphy Bunting and uh, Jamel Dean and all those guys. I, like I said, I know the roster really well from watching a lot of film and hearing the recruiting pitch a couple years ago, so they, they have a really good group back there. You have a special relationship with Rondé Barber. How did that relationship come to be, and is he a guy that you leaned on when you made the transition from corner to safety? Uh, Rondé is a, just a mentor of mine. He, he's one of my favorite players growing up. Um, he was a versatile player before his time. He should be a first ballot Hall of Famer. And um, I just – I really wanted to reach out to him and get to know him because I – uh, loved him as a, as a person and how he handled himself in the community, but also his uh, durability. I really wanted to know the key to durability. I really wanted to know the key to staying on the field. And um, so we had a lot of talks on how do you play 16 years without missing a game. And a lot of that is, is good fortune, but uh, there has to be something to it. And so I, I try to learn his formula a little bit on how to be available to my team each and every day. I've gone on year 10. I missed very few games in my career. But – I uh, I hold myself to a category of very few players in this league have hit certain achievements such as a combination of sacks and interceptions and tackles and games played. And I know guys are good at one thing, but I try to expand in every category, force fumbles. And Rondes and Charles Woodson are some of those guys who've done it in each category. So Rondes just a gold standard to me, one of my favorite players growing up. 
obviously located in Tampa. I have a house in Tampa as well. So anytime I can bring him on the field or anytime I can ask him to go to dinner, I'm just asking him everything I can. And he probably gets annoyed at me a little bit. But um, now I'm a buck, so maybe he doesn't, you know, maybe he minds it a little bit. Why, why do the Hall of Fame voters not give enough credit to DBs that, that get sacks, that are doing more stuff closer to the line of scrimmage, you know, which is oftentimes where Ronde made some of his biggest plays? It's just different. It's just different. Um, you know, you're tracking stats for one thing, and maybe, you know, for receivers catching touchdowns, for DBs, I guess it's interceptions, but DBs can impact the game a variety of ways. And Rondé's a winner, and he won a Super Bowl here, and he's a key part of it. And I got a great teammate here, Shaq, who was, uh, who's, amaz who's amazing, uh, that is excited to be a Buck as well. <laughs> Shaq, Shaq, for you, I know it's never easy getting traded, but how cool is it to, to get a go to a team where you, you not only know people like Logan and Tom and perhaps Rob, but guys you've also won a championship with too? Yeah, man, it's, um, like you said, it's it's a shock, but um, it's definitely exciting to land in a, in a spot like this with a winning organization and, you know, high caliber uh, standard, and I mean, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, your reaction, both of you guys, to just, I mean, having played with Tom before, when you watch him sign with the Bucks initially, to do what they were able to do in the first year and to transform the culture uh, to become, a, you know, a, a playoff team last year as well, how, I mean, I, I take it neither one of you were surprised by the immediate impact of Brady. Um, <clears throat> I definitely wasn't surprised at all. Uh, for me personally, um, it was like a, sudden change just simply because my first five seasons was with Tom so when he left and came here and won I was like you know that that was expected honestly because I mean I knew exactly what he was going to bring to any organization bring to the table each and every day so I mean I, I honestly wasn't surprised by you know him winning as soon as he got here Everybody always talks about with Brady, you've got to keep that interior pocket so tight. Um, just what's it like playing with a guy that, that demands so much of himself, but also with the guys around him? And how did he set the tone for your career? Um, it's just uh, you see how he comes to work each and every day. You see the, the standard that he holds himself to. And whether you want to or not, you naturally up, you know, you uphold yourself to a higher standard and a um, higher level execution as well, just from simply just being around the guy, and that, I mean, that says a lot about him and his effect on you know everyone around him. Shaq, can you share what your relationship is with Tom? Like, did you guys keep in touch when he came down to Tampa, and have you guys, um, you know, spoken since you arrived? Yeah. Um, so when he first left, um, we stayed in touch. We stayed in touch when he won. Um, usually. Uh, all through the season, we send random texts back and forth, just chatting. And as um, soon as I got traded here, he uh, also hit me up, you know, excited to go to work, excited to be back together. When you talk about random texts, are we talking like checking in on the family or are you commenting on how he plays or what's the context? It's, usually, it's, it's mainly mainly football related, but, um, you know, checking on the family occasionally, but mainly all football related. So he's not sending you some of those fire memes that he's posting on Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> fit into what this offense does? I know people have said um, there are some similarities to the offense that, that you guys ran in, in New England, but, but how does your skill set transfer over here? Um, I, I view myself as, you know, um, athletic, you know, athletic lineman. And, um, you know, as much as this offense is high powered and it does, you know, a lot of things well, I feel like um, I can come in and, you know, put my abilities you know, in place to, you know, help this offense succeed as much as I can. What's your thoughts on the cast you're joining, Tristan and Ryan and Donnie and those guys? Great group. Um, definitely excited to, you know, play with those guys and learn from them and, you know, just uh, get going. How much do you follow just the movement of other offensive line in the league? Like when Allie retires and Alex Kappa goes, to Cincinnati, are you on the phone with your agent? Are you aware that there's openings? How connected are you to that? Um, I honestly, what I, I knew that um, Ali uh, retired because um, I know that that shocked me uh, personally, and um, I, I definitely didn't know about you know the opening at uh, the other guard position or anything like that. I wasn't keeping track of you know stuff like that. Shaq, curious because you guys faced the Bucks last year. What your assessment is of? the Bucks defense that you went up against last year? Um, good defense. I um, think they 
were the only team that held uh, the Patriots to, like, the rushing total was, I think, the, the least it was all year against the uh, Bucks. I want to say. Something like that. But I definitely um, remember that game for sure. What's it like for you? Because um, we saw it here. When this team would go no huddle, I mean, they many times were unstoppable on offense. What's it like for you being in the trenches when Tom's on one of those roles like that where it's just like you're moving the ball at will it's, against any of these defenses? It's, it's a great thing. And um, I'm definitely excited to be a part of that again because it just – it puts it honestly puts everything in autopilot. Like you get lost in the game when things are going that well, that fast, and it's like you know, no matter what they do, they can't stop it. And I mean, it's a, it's a great feeling. Do you get tired explaining your first and middle names, or is that something you still embrace? I embrace it. I mean, it's me. It's me. So I embrace it for sure. Have you played with another Shaq as a teammate before? I have not. Wow. I have not. Yeah. <laughs> It seems like you have a sense of humor about a lot of things. Can you appreciate that you're named after two seven-footers and the single biggest thing people bring up against you is a lack of height? <laughs> what's, your, what's your middle 100%. name? 100%. Elijah Wan. I didn't know that. <clears throat> wow. Yeah, so I was named after uh, Shaquille O'Neal and Hakeem Elijah Wan, who, like you said, were two giant centers. And, <laughs> you know, I'm a short <laughs> I'm a short <laughs> offensive lineman, so I'll be, you know, I didn't, I didn't get that uh, from my namesake, but I mean, I think everything worked out well. Some of those traits, right? Like exactly. <laughs> Shaq, we talk about you know blocking for Tom Brady, obviously, but when you have a, a guy like Leonard Fournette now on your team, I mean, how excited are you to be uh, blocking for him? And what have you seen from him over the years? Uh, I'm definitely excited to block for him. Um, I think as an offensive lineman, you want to block for a, an explosive back like that that can do whatever at any point in the game, that can make a game-changing play at any moment, and um, as a, as a O lineman, you you want that just because it can be whatever down. It can go to the house. You know what I'm saying? So, I think that's definitely a um, a key key component. Logan, curious what you think practice is going to be like getting to go up against guys like Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. How much that's going to help your game? Ultra competitive. I hope. I know with Tom it will be. Um, playing against the Bucks for a couple years. I know the stresses that they bring with. Uh, the play calling, uh, the offense of scheme, and then just the talent at receiver, the talent at tight end, uh, a good running back like uh, Leonard Fournette, a good quarterback distributing it, it, it stresses you a lot. So um, great defense as well. I know it was like playing against their defense and what our what our game plan was against them and whatnot. So practice is going to be a lot of fun. I'm anticipating in the heat on some great grass. That's a football player's dream and uh, get to match up with Chris, who I matched up with in the past, and Mike and, and Scotty Miller and all those guys. It's going to be a lot of fun. You mentioned that Rondy Barber, you picked his brain about longevity and, and how he's able to do that. You've had longevity in this league. What, were, what are the secrets for you that, that you might have taken from him? The secret sauce, huh? Uh, yeah, between us. Um, it, really, it really is conditioning. It is being an elite. Uh, condition and, and I think Rondé's belief and what I've got from him is that if you're in great shape um, you have a better chance of not getting injured now some bones may break and that's just the, the nature of the game but um, a lot of times players get injured or have soft tissue injuries because they're not in shape or dehydrated and when you get tired out there you really put yourself at risk in bad positions to get injured so I started some distance running because of Rondé um, and some other guys Rod Woodson and guys I kind of spoke about who've been great DBs about um you know, get up in the morning and put a couple miles in. It's something I, I man, I didn't, I didn't run a mile since, like, you know, elementary school gym class or whatever. So now I'm able to run two or three miles every a couple of times a week with ease. Then when I get into sprinting and cutting, I'm in much better shape. I'm in much better position to be more efficient. So I just think that's a little different than our typical football training. We do a lot of short bursts as football. But I think cross-training, doing different things in the off season. I'm an avid pickleball player. It's a great pickleball community down here in Tampa. And uh, some of the distance running, it's just different things that I added to add some longevity and not wear out the same muscles that I use all year. Rondy wasn't the biggest guy. You were very physical. But he, he always would say he had a plan when he had to tackle somebody larger than him. Like he was not yeah. going to preserve himself but have the technique to get a guy on the ground. Do you yeah. kind of exercise that ability? Uh, yeah, when you're 195 pounds and you're leading your team in tackles, you got to do something. So I played against playoff Lenny a bunch. He's a little bit bigger than me. Got to find a way to get him down. Just good fundamental wrap. Um, hold on to those legs and 
wrap and roll or whatever. Use your legs. Um, Rondé is very strong for his for his size. I'm pretty strong, well for my size. So that's just part of the, the nature of being a DB. I think it's one of the hardest positions to play uh, because of the speed that you need to have, the size you need to have. You want to show up in the run game, speed and quickness you need in the pass game, and then be able to try to trick a guy like Tom Brady on top of all that is, is pretty pretty tough. Have there been moments in practice that, that you can kind of, you know, get bragging rights. I know obviously we talked about the game, but against Tom where you're like, yeah, I got the best of him there. Ones that maybe stick out to you. Uh, he, he's had he's had a lot a lot more wins probably against me in practice than I had against him. I remember coming in and he would say, I can tell you the route in one-on-ones, you still can't stop it because I could still throw him open. So he has that type of confidence and competitiveness. Our one-on-ones in New England resulted in push-ups. Uh, where if the receivers won or DBs won, there was always a bet of push-ups or run a lap or whatever. So he always makes it very competitive and fun. I remember my rookie year, um, a receiver, Aaron Dobson, running a curl route. He slipped. I, I picked the ball off. I put a good move on Brady. He might have fell or not. I don't know. I scored, and he ended up taking his helmet off, smashing it and breaking his helmet in practice. And this is like April or May. Um, and... I got a lot of Twitter followers from an OTA interception, but I just saw how crazy competitive it was to see him take his helmet off and smash it, which we've seen on the sidelines at times, but in an OTA practice. So that's something I remember 10 years ago um, that I told, talked about 10 years ago, but that's, that's a true story about how competitive it can get out there. And um, that just brings you to your best. It matters. Every play matters. And if you practice like that, the games were, were easier for us. You'd probably say that the games are probably easier Absolutely. when you have a good team and you're practicing that hard, that competitively and that hard. The practices were easier than the, or the games were easier than practice, I believe. And one of the things that, that's been talked about is like, first of all, it's so hard to win back to back, right? Um, and it's so hard to win more than one Super Bowl title. But there's this stat that that's been floating around about like, you know, Brady. He won't necessarily win the next year, but then it's like he comes roaring back with vengeance the year after, you know, a playoff loss. What is it about him or about the culture that you guys were a part of in New England that allows that to happen? It's just the expectation. It's just uh, you got to put the sacrifice in every every year. Like it doesn't matter what you did last year. You have to have to be willing to put it back in. And obviously, a playoff run, a Super Bowl runs a long season. You're playing a month longer than some other teams. Target on your back or whatnot. So you got to be on your game. And um, obviously, you have to have that hunger each and every year. And you have to have a good good fortune and good health too. Hopefully you guys can stay healthy. I know last year uh, the Bucks had some injuries there with Godwin late, and you know it makes it tough when you don't have your best players available. So you have to have some good fortune with some good luck, but you got to be able to get over that that Super Bowl uh, pretty quickly and get back to work because the league is trying to catch up to you. Do you have a practice anecdote like that? Maybe not Brady <laughs> smashing the helmet, but just a pre- where practice got really intense. Uh, it was a lot of intense practices, but um, it goes go back to OTAs. Um, it's, it's always a lot of chirping between uh, the DBs and Tom, per se, you know, because it's just always that they all want to pick off Tom. They all want to, you know, that, that's just the way it goes. And um, good day or bad day, we knew the level of intensity was going to be high, whether it was training camp or OTAs. And um, I think that just, as I said, just raises the standard when you have those intense practices, those intense periods. And... As uh, Logan said, it made games so much easier because practice was the hardest thing of the of the week. What did he say to you when, when the train was fu- the train was finalized when you found out that you were coming to Tampa? Um, he uh, texted me. He was like, uh, "My guy's back with me. Uh, I'm ready to go." So, and that was that's how that uh, that worked out. What was your reaction to learning about the trade? I know you were surprised. Um, you know, you you knew Allie retired, but did you didn't realize there was going to be an opening? Here? Right. So um, when I when I um, heard about it, um, I was initially shocked because I mean you, that was it wasn't on my mind at all or anything like that. But um, when I knew the destination, I instantly got excited because I mean it's what what better place to come to or what better position to land in than you know being with a contender, um, great uh, high powered offense, great defense, um, great staff. I mean, I feel like I landed in the perfect position. Obviously, a lot of things have changed with the Giants since the end of last season. Were you surprised that they, they would let you go the way they did? Yeah, it wasn't my call. I mean, that's just the direction they wanted to go, and I'm really excited for being on the Bucks and 
not only like we talk about Tom, obviously a lot about this and, and some of the roster, but the building. There's just a great, um, great building here, talking to B.A. about what he believes in his players and his players kind of running the uh, policing the locker room and how he respects and uh, believes in his veterans and values veterans. Um, that, that just felt so great. You got Coach Kevin Ross, who's uh, from Camden, New Jersey, where I was born. Todd Bowles from Elizabeth, has a son playing at Rutgers. Um, I grew up not far from Temple University where all the coaches worked at. And I was on those Temple camps as an eighth grader and ninth grader trying to get a scholarship at every position, quarterback, receiver, DB. So there's a lot of reasons uh, that things are moving in a great direction here. And I think it has to do with the coaching staff and the people in this building as well. Thank you guys. Appreciate it.